Hi everyone, welcome to another Schweiky webinar. I'm Alicia Lawrence from WebPageFX, a internet marketing company that you can see here on the screen. You can check us out online. So the past few webinars have been about really technical SEO strategies and tactics, but today I kind of want to go back to the basics and give you some quick and simple SEO tactics that you should do right now. Uh, these tactics that I'll be going over will really only take you one day to complete it if you set a few hours aside. And these are just some of the general things we do for every client, it's kind of like the foundation of SEO. So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to cover is your optimizing titles and metas. Now, for those of you who don't know what titles and metas are, when you go and search in a search engine, uh, you see all these listings. Uh, the main headline is your title, and the little description underneath is your meta description. And so what you want to do to optimize that, for the most part, if you have a WordPress site, which I'm uh, guessing most of you do, it's really easy. You guys have lucked out. Um, here's a, a blog that I help run. All you have to do is get this plugin. It's WordPress SEO by Yoast. And you just simply fill in your main focus keyword. Uh, in this example, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And it will even tell you how many times that keyword shows up in your content and if it's in your meta description and URL and title, which these are all places your uh, keyword or version of your keyword should be. Uh, you can see that it's highlighted in my title here, which I can edit down here on SEO title. That's what's going to show up both on this little tab up here and also in the search engine when people uh, search for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, hopefully. And then you'll, in this meta description, I also have it at the end here. And you don't have to have the exact keyword if it's kind of an awkward uh, keyword to put in. But it's great to have a version of a keyword or at least a few of those words sprinkled throughout the meta description. Now, if you have a site and you're not sure if you have your meta description filled out, all you have to do is right click, go to inspect. And a little box is going to pop up that shows all the HTML of the site. And I'm just going to control F and search this box for description. And you see right there, we have a meta description for our homepage, which is WebPageFX provides internet marketing services for B2C, B2B, and e-commerce clients. And it kind of goes on. Uh, for those of you who aren't sure uh, how to fill that out and you don't have a really nifty SEO Yoast plugin that gives you um, how many words available and characters you have, you have normally 160 characters for that meta description. Uh, there's a really nifty tool that you can bring up that's uh, called the SERP snippet tool. And it'll kind of show you what it's going to look like in the search engine. Let's see if I can show you that. So it's just seomofo.com slash snippet optimizer.html. And once that loads, you'll be able to see it. We'll come back to that in just a second. Um, since we're over here on the web page FX site, I kind of want to hit our second main thing that you should be doing on your site that's simple and easy and quick. It's internal linking. Uh, now, I say it's easy and quick for most websites, though internal linking can get very complicated sometimes, especially if you have a big site with lots of pages, which you do want to have uh, lots of great content on your site to interlink with. So interlinking is simply connecting one page on a website to a different page on the same website. And correctly interlinking your pages is just as important as building inbound links to your site. Uh, once you have it done, your site will be optimized. Um, and it's good for user experience. Let's say they're coming through here and they're like, oh, I want to see revenue growth solutions. So it's easy access to those pages. You can also have links um, in the actual copy like this instead of the buttons. A real results and see that actually goes to webpagefx.com slash real results. So I have a nice keyword uh, tag there that's the same as the URL it's going to. Um, this will also help Google crawl your site as it comes through. Home page is usually the first site they crawl. And so it'll be coming down here, and any links they can click, it'll go through and therefore continue to, to crawl your website, kind of like a waterfall effect. So you kind of want to have those pages nicely connected. Um, big thing is, though, when you're internal linking, you want to ask yourself, does it make sense? You don't want to have like a random page on your real results page that doesn't connect to that page. Uh, specifically. You don't want it to be like an awkward 
link that's really random. So just make sure that it makes sense. Uh, one of the other things that internal linking helps your site to do is it distributes page authority, which is kind of like that link juice that you pull into your site that I've talked about previously. And it helps it rank in the web. So it kind of distributes um, how well the pages rank together. Uh, two or three common mistakes actually that a lot of people make is they think, oh, well, I'll just put all my links down here in the footer. And therefore, you know, it's all kind of connected because, you know, the links will be in the footer on every single page. No site-wide footer links. Um, Google sees that as negative SEO value. Two more uh, mistakes commonly made is people think, well, I'll just link out from the home page to that page and then just link back from let's say that real results page back to the home page and that'll really be the only connection in, is from the home page to that specific page and back but then you're missing a lot of opportunity uh, to link in between other pages as well and even on your blog it's really important to have that internal linking uh, don't go crazy and it shouldn't be like too sprinkled everything in moderation right uh, another one that's common, similar to the home page, is people just linking to the contact us page, always on the bottom. Uh, vary that up, and we'll actually cover that kind of call to action on pages a little bit later in this. So let's see if we can go back to our snippet. Here it is. Okay, so for the optimizing titles and metas, all you have to do is come in here. You can put in your title. Woohoo, I'm a title. And you can kind of see how it appears down here. And that's how it's going to look like in the search engine. So it'll tell you when you're over that character limit for both of these. So that's always a really nice tool if you don't have SEO Yoast or a WordPress plugin. Now going to number three is checking for broken links. And there's a few tools you can use. I like to use Google Webmaster Tools. So once you get signed in with the uh, Gmail account that's connected to the site that you're looking at, you're going to click that site. And it's going to take you to this little search console. You're going to go down to crawl. You'll see it over here on the left side, and then you're going to go to Crawl Errors, which is right underneath. So once that loads, you'll be able to see uh, what kind of broken links you might have on your site. And broken links are any of the links that are coming in or even in between pages like interlinking that for some reason is going to a 404 page or the URL is messed up. So if you scroll down, you'll see uh, here the URL and it says 404 code. So I'm just going to click on that and then click on linked from tab and I'll actually show you this is actually an external link uh, from my first condo that's linking to uh, Homey Improvements. And so I know that I need to look into that and see, is this actually an error? Um, it's going to a little percentage 22 at the end here, so I need to get that removed. Uh, the best way to fix these, if it's on an external site like that and you can't fix it, is to redirect it just in case for some reason that's happened before. And same with even all the links on your site, which you can fix. Uh, you still want to redirect it just in case, for example, if you moved a, a service page even though you might fix any of the internal linking, someone else might have linked to that service page and you don't want to lose that referral traffic there. So just make sure that you get a, a redirect, 301 redirect for them, and therefore I'll fix that. And this is also, broken links for those who don't know, is definitely a negative SEO value because crawlers will come and they'll get on a page that says, you know, not found. And they're like, oh, well, that's bad. You don't want your readers to do that. So they're going to kind of dock you uh, when it comes to search engine traffic. Number four is adding calls to action on your pages. So I'm going to show you two examples of this. Um, this is really important, at least on all your key pages. I know this is going to vary. Uh, to your preference and to your industry. But definitely on all your main service pages, you want to have a relevant call to action. It doesn't always have to be contact us. It could be sign up for our newsletter, or it could be call for a quote, or to fill out a certain tool that gives you a quote. We have that a lot on uh, WebPageFX. So for this one, this one's a blog. And not all our blog posts has 
a call to action, but I'm going to show you two different types here. Uh, the first one is click this product image below to learn more. So we've talked about this uh, diatomaceous earth throughout this entire blog post, and now they can click it and go see the, the formula for diatomaceous earth that's in our products. Uh, the second one I want you guys to look at is this one, which is also on a blog for uh, Vasant Systems. And it just says, want to learn more? Click here. And it goes to the contact page. It's a nice little green actional button, especially is good for those who uh, maybe have a page with a really low click-through rate, and maybe they have a high bounce rate, and people are just reading and then going off and not exploring other pages to the site. So this is great to be able to try to increase that click-through rate and, or decrease the bounce rate. And you might be able to actually see um, interlinking in the copy here if you look down in the lower left-hand corner. This goes to how CMS benefits organizations, so they have some nice other uh, clicks down here that if they don't want to actually contact us, they could explore more pages. Number five is images. And you might think, well, what does images really have to do with SEO? But they actually have a lot to do with SEO uh, for two very specific reasons. The first one is images help engagement. We have a client uh, that had a bunch of content that we added onto their site. And um, the IM hadn't gone to the images yet, so the bounce rate was like 90% on those pages because it was only six paragraphs, and that was it. But as soon as uh, she broke up the, the text with images, uh, the bounce rate went down to 50 to 60% for those pages. So you can see right there, um, it really helps the bounce rate because of engagement. Several pictures on there are really good uh, just for people to be like, oh, yeah, I understand that better. Plus, a lot of people who read online are scanners, and they kind of just want to see visually what you're talking about, if that's possible. Uh, the other reason images are so key on websites is because of the alt tag. So to see that, I'm just going to right click, go to inspect, and that box is going to pop up one more time. There it goes. And you're going to be able to see in here, it says Alt Christmas DIY Table Decor. And that's actually what's also on the image itself. And it, I read somewhere online, some guy was explaining how to do alt tags. And I loved what he said because it's so true. Write your alt tag like you're writing, trying to describe the picture to a blind person. Because that's really what you're doing. Um, alt tags are for people who are blind. And so when they look at computers, the computer talks to them. And it will basically read off your alt tag so they understand what the picture is. Um, and even we can think of Google spiders as kind of blind uh, because they can't see that image they have to crawl it using the alt tag to better understand uh, what that image is about. So what you're going to do also is make sure that it's not just uh, a description. You can have way more than just these like four words that you have here. I also like to include keyword in there that's uh, relevant to the image if I can. Christmas DIY table decor actually was my main keyword on this. So it worked out really nicely for me. And one thing that you might not be thinking about is, but of course, like I would on my blog, uh, DIY Home and Health, is uh, Pinterest uses that alt tag as the little description. And they can change that when they pin it. But if they don't, I mean, that description is going to be in there. It's going to help uh, people find it on Pinterest as well. And Pinterest is like my main referral traffic. So making sure images are optimized for Pinterest as well is uh, a win-win-win because you also get the spiders be able to crawl it, and it's uh, also adding to my keyword density on the page, uh, making sure that Google knows that Christmas DIY table decor is definitely what this is about, so it should be ranking for it. So that's why you should definitely be adding images to your copy if you don't have any already, and making sure that all of them have alt tags that make sense for the image as well for uh, the keywords that you might want to be optimizing for. Now, lastly, we're going to talk about once you finish all these uh, tiny little simple SEO tactics that you should be doing on your pages, there's one last thing you have to do, and that is making sure that all your site pages are in an XML sitemap, or create one if you don't have one already. Um, it's really easy to create one. It literally will take you less than a minute. All you have to do is put in your main domain here, fill out this information, 
and then start, and it'll generate a XML map uh, with a uh, end of a URL that you can plug in then to run under crawl again. We're going to go to sitemaps. This is Google Webmaster Tools. I went back to that tab. Once it pops up, you'll be able to see where you can add it. Here you go. Um, Help Me Improvements didn't have one in there, mostly because I use it for uh, testing. So right here, all you have to do is add that end of the URL, submit the sitemap, and you're done. It's that easy. Really, it is, I promise. Um, one thing you should know about XML sitemaps, if you're not familiar with that term, is that there's two different sitemaps you'll want to have. XML sitemap is basically uh, telling Google you want them to crawl your site. Yes, they will crawl your site even without the sitemap being put in there, uh, but this will help Google recognize it quicker, uh, which is great if you are removing penalties from your site and you're like, okay, it's removed. Please crawl my site and see that it's good. Um, or maybe you just made some big changes, like the following that I had actually talked about today. Uh, you'll definitely want to resubmit your sitemap just so they know to recrawl all those pages. Uh, the second type of sitemap is an HTML sitemap, which you can usually find at the uh, uh, root file or at the very footer of a website. And that's more for user friendliness. If someone gets lost and they just want to see all the pages you have on your site. Uh, but it's also helping Google crawl your site as well. So uh, it's really important, especially for bigger pages or bigger sites that have a lot of pages. So you'll definitely want to have those two. But the one I wanted to focus on um, in this quick and simple SEO tactics webinar is the XML sitemap. Uh, one other thing you might want to know about the XML sitemap is there is a priority uh, when you do submit it for XML sitemaps. You usually want to have one uh, or priority number one for your home page because that's telling Google this is the most important page to crawl. Um, kind of like their starting base. And then uh, priority for other pages is usually around a point eight. Um, saying these are the pages you'll want to crawl next. So to wrap up, some quick and simple SEO tactics you guys should do today is optimizing your titles and meta descriptions, internal linking, checking for broken links on your site, and fixing them, adding calls to actions on your pages and blogs, um, adding images to pages and making sure they're optimized with alt tags, and making sure that all your site pages are an XML sitemap. Thanks for listening and have a happy holiday.